Hey everyone, Amir Justice here. Welcome to my review of issue number three from Boom Studios of Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. And I have to say, folks, this was a very good issue. Some may say it's filler, but to me, I think they did a decent job with this issue. There's no doubt about that. The cover, of course, is known as cover A. There is, I believe, four covers. Actually, three covers, I believe. And it says, yes, there are three covers. Actually, I think there's two more covers. I'm not really sure, because I'm pretty sure there's two covers. But anyway, this is indeed issue number three in Worldwide, Advent Worldwide West Rescue, which is the new story for the Rescue Rangers. I'm trying to set it up here so it doesn't fall. It's a little uh, clumsy. There we go. This is indeed the newest issue that just came out, I believe, last week for the Rescue Rangers. And again, let me try to organize this. I had it perfect just a minute ago. There we go. I think you can see that. Let me check. Yes, you can see that a little bit. Let's move the camera. There we go. But yes, this is issue number three. This is probably, you know, some people call it a filler. I don't call it a filler. I call it a continuation of a great revival of, of this comic. Now, the comic basically starts off with the uh, preview pages on boomstudios.com, boomstudiocomics.com leaves us. Basically, we start off here, um, if I could try to get this um, to stay. We start off with the uh, first couple of pages that you found at boomstudiocomics.com. And it's really interesting because the rescue rangers have basically taken a plane, taken a helicopter, a rescue helicopter, over to the next area for the next piece of the super key, or the final piece, I believe. So anyway, we also get a little nostalgia here, and I apologize for the bird in the background. He loves to chirp. And uh, we get a little nostalgia here with Chip and Dale, and everything Dale kind of telling Chip by throwing a snowball at him that, you know, you got to be fast. And again, I apologize for the bird. Uh, it says you got to be fast here, and basically it's the same old Dale. Well, it's like, no, it's the same old Dale. Now, they do find the last key. Now, Monty believes they're due for an easy one, but Gadget thinks it's a little too easy. And acknowledges the fact that by what they know from the ARS, the ARS, if you will, that these polar bears that are under the control of it wouldn't be so easily scared off by a helicopter. And now she wonders why they're running away. Then Chip notices they're not running, they're heading for the next target. So off they go, and now we get into the next pages. And again, I'm trying to hold this up as best I can. There we go. But basically, we get our next pages here. And here we have Gadget has some Gadget has quickly put together two Ranger sleds, and they're going off into this uh, this next target, this next base, before the polar bears get there. Now we have a little conversation between two guys here. Okay, both work the obviously the same area, but different shifts now. And then we have a guy right here on the radio being told to get the, basically being told to get the hell out of there, and that they've been hearing rumors about alligators back in the states, you know, in the sewers going crazy. So basically, again, they're just telling them get the hell out of there before you before you guys get attacked. Now Gadget comes up with the idea that maybe they can counter signal the signal that's controlling. Uh, the bears by basically jamming it. 
and Chip believes it's the only shot they got. Okay. All right. Again, I'm trying to hold this up a little bit for you. Doing the best I can. It's not easy when you get done. Uh, Basically, the rangers here try to see how the bears are going to react to the signal that they're trying to create. And apparently they don't react. Well, basically she has to for see how the bears react while this is activated. And again, the bears don't react. So they got to turn up the volume, which is obviously the volume, to the uh, microphone, uh, to the uh, communication there. And Dale kind of mentions that, you know, mentions to Chip, hey, bet you regret all the times telling me to turn the volume on the TV down. Basically, telling Chip that, hey, all those times you told me to turn the volume down on the TV, now you're probably wishing I didn't. So basically the speakers go loud and it gets everybody's attention. The bears of course are still not affected. And of course the bears and of course Dale thinks wonders if maybe that stopped the bears. Of course it did not. They kept they crash or smash through the um, the building or through the doors to attack the people. And the rangers both all along with the people try to hide because they realize, you know, they, that did not work and Chip's learning what's next. And here we have, and Monty says that is, and here we have all these people hammering the door down with uh, two by fours or with some wood. Dale of course brings some nails for them to use, but still that is not working. The bears are scratching away at the door. And then here comes what I have considered the most pivotal moment, probably one of the best moments in the comic so far. Now, Monty has asked Gadget if she's seen any tape around. Now, of course, Gadget doesn't answer at first, and Monty wants to know what's going on. Now, Gadget acknowledges that her dad made something that affects the whole world, and that even though they're there, the incidences happening everywhere and they're just so small and she wonders why didn't he destroy it you know she knows he's not there anymore physically but the ARS signal is she says she has to figure this out and then Monty finally tells her the real reason reason the reason why her father didn't destroy it but instead shut it down he mentions basically the fact that the whole thing was conceived, the, hit, the whole ARS thing was conceived before she was born, but it was launched after. In other words, the planning for the uh, signal, this ARS signal, was thought up and planned and developed before Gadget was born, and then after she was born, it was launched. Now, he not tells her that saving the world... Now, he does say that when your dad told him that when Gigor told him that basically Monty tells her that hey when you came into his life when you were born his view of the entire world changed in other words he had a different in other words his eyes were opened if you will when Gadget was born and then he says saving the world wasn't just a matter of figures or algorithm limits like it was when the ARS was being hatched he really started to see what people meant to each other, what it could mean to, to lose someone and what it means to see someone who has a future. And, this is every, and basically this is everything that Gigor told Monty. And then he also says he didn't want the ARS to fall into the wrong hands, but he also didn't want it to be deprived from someone who could take a device with a global reach and do something wonderful with it. He didn't know what that could be, but he thought one day maybe you could do something with it. So in other words, 
So in other words, overall, in this one, now, as the bears are tearing through, Monty jumps off the uh, thing, says, gotta go, I know you'll figure it out. And you kind of see tears coming out of uh, Gadget's eyes here. You kind of see some tears coming out of her eyes. Now, here's the thing. What he's basically saying here is the reason Gigor didn't destroy this ARS signal when he could have, instead of shutting it down, I don't know, it's because he hoped, Gigor hoped that his daughter, Gadget, could do something with it that would be wonderful and beneficial to everybody. So, anyway, the bears continue to try to break through. Zipper is able to find an opening when he remembers that his friends are in there. And as he comes through the door, Gadget sees it, calls him, you know, is thankful that he came back and that he's the last part of the bear of this bear attack. And she basically says they can't just interrupt this signal, they need to replace it with something. In other words, they need to override the signal. Or no, with a new signal. So basically she tells him that she needs him to hit right into the middle of the North Pole. There's enough electromagnetic energy there for you to become a beacon. And then she says, when you're there, open this note. And she says, before you leave, I know you'll be wonderful. So Zipper takes off, heads to the North Pole, or basically the North, not physically the North Pole, which is above us, or wherever it's located on this world, basically on top of the world. Not that, just basically the North Pole of the region they're in. Basically, like I said, the North Pole of the region they're in. Now, she think, then Zippo opens the letter and it basically says, think about those you love. So Zippo starts thinking about his parents, about the rangers, and that helps him obviously become a living beacon to override and just override and replace the signal with a new one that overrides and shuts down the signal controlling the bears. So basically, after this, the rangers are leaving back on the helicopter and Chip throws out a paper plane. Now, Monty, now, uh, now, you know, Chip throws out a paper plane, you know, as they're leaving. Now, Dale wants to know what the deal with it is. And Chip basically explains that they're above the camp, they, the camp, they first, the first place they came to. They're above the camp, the first place they came to. And he thinks that someone is following them, yet the signal's never been turned on us. In other words, it's never been turned on them. And yet, basically what he's saying is the signal has not been used on them to probably do what's going to happen in the next issue, try to turn them against each other. And basically Dale's like, like, some, like, like and Dale's asking what? Like someone's got a, you know, ace up the sleeve, and the chip says, I know who's behind this. Well, I think, and he basically tells Dale, Dale, I think I know who's behind this. And we get the last panel where it looks like a uh, fat cat is trying to negotiate, I think, with some underground animal bosses or something like that. And he did basically tells them that it'll all end if he gets total, of obviously, control of the animal kingdom or something like that. Metz interrupts him and tells him that the rescue rangers, see, that he should see some footage about the rescue rangers. He looks at the footage and sees it's the note that Chip said, you know, through, you know, it's the airplane with the note inside it saying that they are coming uh, to get him. So, uh, overall, overall, I have to say, number three, many might say it's a filler. Many might say it's filler, but to me, it's not. It's a b good continuation uh, to the story, and that's all I have to say about it. I give it, uh, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Like I said, not a filler. It's a good continuation. It got a good moment there with Gadget, realizing that her father, after Monty told her, realizing her father meant for the ARS to be used by her in a positive way. Overall, a great, great continuation. 9 out of 10. Definitely pick this up if you can. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Thank you for watching my review, listening to it. And tell me what you think. Comments are welcome below. And I am out.